see you. Thank you so much for this movie. I was carried away by it. What was the impetus for the movie? It just literally was an idea that dropped in to my head about 15 or maybe even 18 years ago. It was a short, it felt like a short story in my head. And I wrote it down and then it took me 10 years to even tell anybody that I wanted to make a movie. And then it took me another five or eight to develop the courage to do it. So one of the things that uh, the characters in this movie have in common are personal experiences which they have trouble translating to the world. As a creative person, how easy has it been to get your creative voice um, manifested in a way that others appreciate and get into the groove, so to speak? Well, I feel like very luckily, um, ever since I decided to stop being an artist, get sober and then start writing songs for other people, and then accidentally became successful through Chandelier and um, the wig and the anonymity, you know, I feel like I've had so much more success than I ever did before. And I think it's because probably um, hiding behind a wig and writing much more um, sort of, I used to want to be really cool and um, poetic and, you know, with alliteration. And, uh, and then when I stopped caring so much about, when I, well, not caring, but when I stopped trying so hard, um, I found that way more people could, um, attached to uh, project their feelings onto my my songs so the broader I made them the more successful they were and I just hadn't realized that before um and my, you know I'd been writing very specific things lyrically and you know they they were heard by you know between 12 and 1200 people <laughs> so I wasn't doing badly <laughs> but <laughs> I think I think the numbers were kind of higher up there. Well, they're up there now. I think when I stopped actually self-censoring and when I stopped being uh, worried about what I was saying or scared to be uh, vulnerable, and I I was able to um, admit fear and defeat and humility or whatever. That seems to be when I started to really. I seemed to be able to translate what I was feeling and and uh, thinking into words that were understandable. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, but the interesting thing about both with just the most adorable dog. But the thing that's interesting about um, your characters and what you've just said is that um, when you hide. Um, I think uh, you disconnect from the world. And in, in the uh, dance numbers in particular, um, you bring the internal to the external. So has it always been easy for you to do that? Um, and talk about those dance numbers because they're marvelous. Ever since I started working with Brian and Maddie, um, I feel it's so much easier to express music through dance. Um, Did you always have Katie in mind? Um, I mean, I, no, not from 18 years ago. Originally, when I first was thinking about it, I remember it was Jake Gyllenhaal and Maggie Gyllenhaal I thought would be siblings. And um, yeah, it's that long ago that we could, that like Maggie could have played a teenager. So, um, uh, but no, as soon as I saw her singing on an Instagram post um, on a, a bit of news somewhere, I was like, oh, she can really sing. So that's when I organized to have um, a lunch with her. And I told her, as she read the script, she said, I was born to do it, let me do it. And I was like, will you shave your head? And she said, yes. And I said, okay, let's do it. Well, I'm gonna shave my head. Um, <laughs> Start putting singing uh, Instagrams up and maybe I'll be included in the next one. Of course, I can't sing or dance, but that's neither here nor there. I can put you in as just, you know, a standing, a, a bypasser. Very good. I look forward to it. 
joyful movie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.